Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. As you already know, Windows 10 is a very distinctive look and feel. I'm not just talking about things like the hamburger style navigation. I'm also talking about uh, the colors, the background, foreground colors, the typography. And so there's actually this great resource that deals with the aesthetics of building uh, Universal Windows Platform apps. As you can see on screen right now, it's at this URL that I'm going to pop up here. And uh, this will talk about the aesthetics, about navigation styles. So anything related to the design and user interaction, user experience, you'll definitely want to consult uh, this document, there are probably other great resources available on Microsoft.com as well or Windows.com. Uh, but even inside of those guidelines, there is room for some creative expression. Uh, for example, your company may need its branding, its colors, uh, its font styles to be represented in the application. So you'll not only want to know what the rules are, but then you'll also want to know why and when to break those rules. Now in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the technical aspects of working with XAML to style up your app. Primarily what I want to talk about are creating reusable styles uh, and resources that can be shared between many different elements across uh, a single page, multiple pages in your entire app, or even across multiple applications. Now in the next lesson, we're going to talk about the pre-built themes that are available uh, that will help to force consistency across all apps uh, on a given user's device. We'll talk about that later. Now, suppose that you have a particular color or a setting that you know that you're going to want to use throughout the entire page of your application or the entire app. Perhaps a color or a setting that you might want to change occasionally and you just want to make that change in one place and then have it reflected everywhere that that particular style is being utilized, kind of similar to cascading style sheets. Well in that case you're going to want to create a resource and then bind to that resource as necessary. So I've created a new project called XAML Resources uh, and I want to create the most simple illustration example of using uh, resources that I possibly could. So what I'm going to do here uh, in the main page.xaml, and I've made no changes to this whatsoever, I'm going to add a page.resources section. All right, so inside of that page.resources, I'm going to add a new uh, resource that I'm going to call a solid colored brush. I'm going to give it a name called My Brush. And that will simply use a solid color brush color of brown. Again, extremely simple example just to illustrate the concept, and then we'll move on from there with better examples. Now, whenever I want to use that, that brush that I've defined anywhere in my application, I can reference it like so using a binding statement. So here I'm setting uh, the foreground of my text block to a binding statement. You can see the open and close curly braces and the word static resource and then I give it the name of the resource that I want to bind to, in this case my brush. Now the key is that binding syntax which we see often for different purposes in XAML. Uh, binding to a resource takes the form of the binding expression syntax of so the open and close curly brace and then the word static resource and then whatever the resource name is. The curly braces indicate binding. So that first word, static resource, defines the type of binding that we're engaging in. We're binding to a re resource that's defined in XAML, and it's only evaluated once as the application first starts. And there are other kinds of binding expressions that allow you to continually evaluate uh, the information that will be bound or pre pre-compile the binding statements that we'll talk about as well uh, and and so on and those will come into play at various points during the remainder of this series of lessons. Now in this case I've only created a solid color brush but uh, we can create lots of different resources so for example here I'm just going to create a resource that's a string and it'll just be called uh, the greeting and here I can use that greeting in that text attribute of my text block. So here I'll go static resource and then I'll use the key greeting like so. Let's run the application. We haven't done that just yet. Take a look at what this will 
look like. Hopefully it'll say hello world in a brown font. And it does, all right? Again, extremely simple example to get started here. Now beyond simple resources, styles allow you to collect one or more settings that can be reused across a page or across an entire app for a specific control. Then whenever you want to reuse that style, you set a given control style attribute and essentially bind it to the style that you define. So virtually every control and even the page itself has features of its appearance that can be customized. Uh, whether it be fonts or colors or border thickness or width or height, what have you. So all these attributes can be set on an individual basis on each control in your XAML, which will make your, your XAML quite wordy and maybe even difficult to kind of parse through visually. Uh, oh, and that would be one downside. The other downside is obviously if you miss a setting and you're trying to keep things consistent, uh, you might forget, oh, I forgot to set the font size, the font color. Um, you can keep this all consistent by defining that style one time and then just reusing the style. All right, so here what, I'm just going to copy and paste the style uh, to kind of save from having to type it all out. All right, so we start with an open tag called style and we, uh, we define the type of style that this will be used for. So the target type for this style will be a button control. And we give it also a key so that we can reference it then later on in our XAML. And here we use a series of setter elements. Each setter has the property we want to affect, the property we want to set, as well as the value that we want to set it to. So just a, a series of name value uh, pairs. So in this case, Whenever we apply the style called my button style, we want to set the background to blue, the font family to Arial black, and the font size to 36. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and actually use that. Here I'm going to put a button. I'm going to set the content equal to uh, my um, button style example. I'll set the height equal to 100, and then I'm going to set the style equal to that. Whoops, set the style equal to that binding syntax. So static resource, and uh, I'm going to type in my. And you notice that even IntelliSense will see the styles and the other um, resources that we've defined. So my button style, and that should be good. And uh, just to make sure that these work well. I'm going to create the stack panel out of this and get rid of that. All right, let's run the application. Okay, so you can see that I have now a big blue button, large text, uh, all of the properties that we set for that style were applied very quickly and easily by just binding it to that static resource that we defined. Okay. So again, these are very simple examples to illustrate the idea, and as a result, it may not be readily apparent why you would actually want to utilize styles and resources. I mean, what's the value of this approach? Well, as your application grows larger and larger, as you add more pages or many more controls to your application, uh, you might find this approach to be quite handy. I mean, it'll be a lot of effort to reapply even those three properties every single time you have a button control in your application. So uh, using styles and resources is going to help to keep your XAML compact and concise. It's also going to be easier to manage. Uh, and so in that regard, if you ever need to make a change, you change it in one spot in the style itself and then it's applied everywhere. Now, I created these as uh, local resources on the page where they're being used, meaning that they're scoped to just this main page .xaml. But what if I wanted to share these resources across all of the pages in my application? Well, in that case, I would remove uh, those resources uh, and the style from this main page .xaml, and I'd put them into an application resources. Uh, element on the app.xaml. So here, let me do this. I'm actually going to just 
select, hit Control X on my keyboard to remove these, go over to the app.xaml. I'm going to go application.resources. And then I'll paste them in here. Now, the end result should be the same. Nothing should change about my application whatsoever. If I were to rerun the application, because we're sharing those styles across all pages of my app, uh, by putting them into the app.xaml, uh, we get the same effect. And it just makes my, my main page.xaml that much smaller and more compact. All right. And one last point uh, you can see here that. Uh, that this resource dictionary that we've defined here, this application.resources, uh, that we are only using it to create like resources, solid color brushes and strings, or actual styles, but uh, this can also contain static resources, uh, control templates, animations, and even more. All right, so this is very handy, especially if we need to reuse things across the entire application. All right, so beyond just a simple resource dictionary that we've defined at the page level and at the application level, you can also create what are called merged resource dictionaries that allow you to define your resource dictionaries in multiple files and then combine them together. And you might do this to help you manage the complexity to reuse uh, your dictionary files in other projects, things of that nature. All right. So what we're going to do here in the XAML resources is right click. Well, actually, let me do this instead. I'm going to go to Project, Add New Item, and here what I want to do is select the resource dictionary. I'm going to leave the name as Dictionary One .xaml and click Add. All right. And I'm just going to paste in a really, really simple. Uh, solid color brush I'm just giving it the name brush saying it's color equal to red nothing very fancy here but what we'll do then is we actually need to merge this resource dictionary into the pages resource dictionary and to do that we're going to um, go to the page dot resources and create a resource dictionary element and then a resource dictionary dot merge dictionaries attribute and uh, here we're going to create a resource dictionary and set the source equal to and just to prove how this works I'm going to remove this foreground um, from the my brush that I created earlier just to the to the brush that I know that's defined inside of that dictionary one dot XAML. And now we should see red text at the very top of our app. And we do. Great. We can actually um, merge multiple dictionaries together. So here again, I'm just going to go to uh, project, add new item, resource dictionary, dictionary two dot XAML is fine for the name and I'll click add. And here I'm going to grab out the, uh, the greeting here and just paste it into dictionary two and then I'm going to merge that into my main page.xaml so right now it can't find that greeting but what we'll do is um, just copy and paste that and just change this to dictionary two.xaml it should find it again and it should work just like before all right so we can create multiple multiple resource dictionaries and merge them together uh, then reuse these dictionary files in other applications or just split up our styles and other things that we've defined into multiple multiple dictionary uh, resource dictionary files for easy management so that we can find what we're looking for when we need it okay so uh, hopefully this was helpful just a way to add consistency and manageability to your application development efforts. All right. So we'll talk about themes in the next lesson. See you there. Thanks.